Hello and welcome to Dublin Zoo. I'm Kelly from the Discovery and Learning team and you're joining us today from our Asian lion habitat. Our pride of Asian lions have just entered and they're very curious about what's going on in their home. So our zookeepers have placed out some scent enrichment for them, some smells in their home that are a little bit different than normal. So they've put in some elephant poo or feces and they've also put in some sticks that the elephants would have fed off as well. And they're very, very curious about it. So at the moment, they're doing very normal behaviors. That might look a bit strange to me or you. They are trying to put those smells onto their bodies. So they might be going around gathering the smells from the habitat to see what's happened, but also mask themselves in those smells. So Kuno's getting very close to all of that elephant poo or feces. He's actually getting his nostrils really close to it and he's starting to rub his face in it. So that mightn't be very good for you or me to do, but to lions that's completely normal to smell like the prey that they might sneak up on in the wild in order to hunt them. <laughs> You can spot our male lion. His name is Kuno. So how did I know he was a male? You probably spotted that he has a really large mane around his face and it actually starts to stretch under his belly as well. And we can tell that Kuno is a slightly older male because his mane isn't a blonde colour, but instead it's gone very, very dark. It's a dark brown. If he was in the wild, it would help to attract females to him to have lots of cubs or babies. So we can see lots of behaviours going on here. Oh, this is amazing. So you see Kuno's making a very, very strange face at the moment. He's trying to get as many of those smells into his nose as possible at a time. Now to do that, they kind of make a strange face like you've just smelled a bad smell. So you might make a face like this to try and get as many smells into your mouth as possible. That's what they do. This is Kamala. So Kamala is Kuno's sister. She hasn't got the mane because she's female. And just a moment ago, she was sitting in the exact spot that Kuno loves to sit in. So she took his favorite spot, but because they get along so well together, that was okay with Kuno. They also live here with two older females, Suri and Sita, who are Kuno and Kamala's mans. And lions are a bit strange like that. They're different to other cats. They love to be in a group. They're very social. They like to be together in a group called a pride. But other cats like tigers, they love to be on their own. They're solitary or they live with a mating pair with one they're gonna have cubs with. But these guys love to be in a group. Hi, my name is John from Dublin Zoo in the Discovery and Learning Department. And we're here at the Bongo Habitat. I'm going to introduce you to one of our more secretive animals in Dublin Zoo. They're very shy and they're very quiet. So we're going to need to have be careful when we look at them. We don't want to scare them off. These are one of the more endangered animals that we have here in Dublin Zoo. There's only 150 of them left in the wild. They're from mountainous rainforest areas in Kenya in the continent of Africa. Now Bongo, like the ones behind me, they're browsers. That means that they eat leaves. They've even been observed eating trees that have been struck by lightning. That sounds like the most hardcore multi I've ever heard of. Eastern Bongo are the biggest antelope in the world. Antelope are kind of your relatives of cows and goats. Bongo have those massive horns and they use those for all kinds of things like protecting themselves, impressing females, and even for rooting up food for themselves. Those horns are made out of keratin. Now keratin is the same stuff that makes up your fingernails and your hair. When they're running through the trees, their horns could get caught in branches and twigs and things like that. So they have to be very careful. So what Nessie, our male behind us, will do is he'll lay his horns right back against his back, kind of like this, and he'll run through the forest. Now, one of my favorite things about the bongo is their color. They have that beautiful red with the white stripes. Those help with camouflage for two different reasons. First one is the red color. 
They're predators, the leopards. They can't really see that red color. They can only see greens and blues. As well as that, those stripes. Those stripes are meant to blend in with all of the shadows and the light coming through the trees. And if you see there behind me, you can see that dappled light and how those stripes blend them in with their background. They have massive ears, and that's a great adaptation to help them to hear predators coming through the forest. And you can see even the babies, when they're born, they have huge ears like radar dishes for picking up any noise that comes through the forest. Our next animal also has big ears for listening, the okapi, or the forest giraffe. We are at the okapi habitat. Behind me here is our youngest okapi, Dalia. And you can tell her apart from her mother because she has a lovely mane going down the back of her neck that she'll lose as she gets older. Now the okapi, they're from the Aturi rainforest in Central Africa. And it wasn't until the 1900s that we in Western Europe discovered that they existed. Back then, we thought that the natives were making them up like a unicorn. And later on, we discovered some extra little materials from them, and we thought, maybe it's a new type of zebra. Much later on, we found the skeletal remains. And from the skeleton, we were able to discover that they were actually a relative of the giraffe. Today, we are at our African savanna to visit our rhinoceros, or our rhinos for short. Have you ever wondered where the name rhinoceros came from? Well, rhinoceros in Greek means nose horn, and that's because they've got horns on their nose. A lot of people think that their horns are made of bone, but they're not at all. They're made of keratin. So you can find keratin in your hair, but also in your nails. So you've got the same material that rhino horns are made out of. How cool is that? Now there are five types or species of rhinos in the world. There are three of them that live in Asia and two live in Africa. So black rhinos and white rhinos both live in Africa in the wild. What color do you think white rhinos are? And what color do you think black rhinos are? Well, the very strange thing about them is they're actually both the same color. They're this gray color that you see on a rhinoceros in the background here. So if they're both the same color and they both look very like and come from similar areas, how could you maybe tell them apart? You can tell them apart by the way that their lips are shaped. So when you look at a white rhino, they've got very flat or squared lips. So I'm gonna make a face now and I hope you can join me doing it at home. So I want you to squidge up your lips like this and make a white rhino face. So can you do that again? That means you are able to eat big clumps of grass off the ground, so you can pick it up really easily in your mouth. But black rhinos have pointed lips, a bit like this. Can you make a spaghetti face like that at home? So that means that they eat leaves off trees and bushes. So even though they're both plant eaters or herbivores, they have different shaped lips for the different food that they eat. So looking in here, do you think they are white or black rhinos based on the shape of their lips? Well done if you guessed that they are white rhinos because they've got those lovely square flat lips. The other thing you probably notice about them is that they are very big. They are the second largest land mammals after elephants. Also, they look like they're kind of covered in lots of mud. So they love mud because it protects them from the sun, from insects, and it keeps them nice and cool. The other thing that helps them is their three toes on their feet. So they're well used to being in very muddy conditions. Our crash or our group of rhinos in the background have just got fed by our zookeepers. Adult rhinos in here eat about 50 kilograms of food a day. That's about the same weight as me in terms of their food per one rhino per day. So Jim at the mail is eating lots of that bamboo and you can see that he's gripping onto the bamboo with his ankles and his claws. Now our red pandas have claws like cats. They have claws that are curved and that can come in and out, they can retract. So when they need to use them to maybe grip onto bark to climb or to hold onto the bamboo that they're eating, they can have the claws out. But if they want, they can take them back in again to keep them nice and protected, a bit like a cat can do.
The great thing about red pandas is they are forest acrobats. They can balance really well on branches, a bit like a gymnast on a balance beam. And that is really important in the wild. It means they can stay really high up in trees, away from threats or predators like snow leopards, and keep safe up there and get lots of food there too. So what's very cool is he'll use his claws to grip onto the bark, but he can also rotate his ankles 180 degrees. That's like you or me turning our ankles completely backwards to help them climb all the way down. So if you think of a cat that gets stuck in a tree, they can't get back down again because they can't do this like a red panda would. They can't climb head first back down. Now they spend about half of their day resting and some of that is because they like to have sleep but also it's because the bamboo doesn't give them a huge amount of nutrition so they have to eat lots of it, probably about 20,000 leaves a day but then the rest of the time they like to have their naps. So if we look again at Jinpa, you can see all the lovely colours on his body. So red pandas are also known as fire fox because of their red rusty colour and also the size of their body, a bit like a fox. You can see that he has a great black colouring on the underside of his body, on his belly, and that means if predators like snow leopards were trying to spot them up in the trees, they'd have a really hard time. It'd be really, really tricky because when they look up, they just see the darkness of the trees. So they blend in or camouflage very, very well with the bottom of their bodies, their legs and their belly. On the top of their bodies, they're that red rusty colour. Now that might look like it stands out in Ireland quite a lot, but in the wild where they live, that helps them blend into the red brown moss on the trees that they live in. So all of their body is built for camouflage or blending in. It's no wonder that our red panda have been voted our visitor's favourite animal at Dublin Zoo to come visit. It's probably because they have super, super cute faces. The white colourings on their face might help them blend into the snow, but also the lichens on the trees too. And if you look, the red markings go from their eyes down to the corner of their mouths. And we think that helps them act like sunglasses. It helps protect their eyes from the sun. So that's our red pandas. Thank you so much for joining us today to learn all about them. For more information, please visit rte.ie forward slash learn and we'll see you soon.